It has been a while, hasn't it? The last Future Film video was a few weeks back now and I really want to do more. So in this video, I'm going to talk about old lenses and why you should adapt them to your mirrorless camera so she has the Fujifilm. Firstly, let me begin by showing you my Fujifilm camera and describing you what it is. This is the X-A2. It's a small body mirrorless camera that allows you to interchange the lenses anytime you want. I've had this for 18 months now, but I believe that it came out in 2015. It's a great entry level camera that produces about 80% of my videos and images. Check, check out my pictures in my Instagram link down below. However, this video is currently being shot between my X-A2 and my Fujifilm X-20 right there. Camera B. So mirrorless cameras, if you did not know, they don't have a mirror. So the distance between the sensor and the lens is shorter, which means you can adapt older lenses to your mirror mirrorless cameras and have them work as expected. Phenomenal. So how do you attach these old lenses to a new camera? With an adapter, I tell you. And there is many different adapters that work with mirrorless cameras, such as this one right here, and also ones that look like this. All my adapters cost around 20 euro. They are the most basic ones that do a great job. They're always metal, make sure of this, because if they're plastic, I wouldn't buy it. But there is also more expensive adapters. For 100 euro, you can get a Metabones adapter, now this adapter is the same as my one, but it allows autofocus functionality on your mirrorless camera. This can be great with some lenses that are really tough to nail that autofocus, but as you may know, my Fujifilm has peaking. This means that the in-focus area will turn a different color. I have it to bright white and it makes manual focus so easy. An important part of using vintage lenses is getting your sounds right in camera. I'm going to turn on my Fuji here now and walk you through the menus. So you don't really need to change much of these, these are just personal preferences, but in menu number 3, custom set, you're going to pick the lens that you're using. I'm going to be using the 50 lens, the 1.4. Apply that, apply the settings, and make sure to shoot without lens is turned on. Image stabilization is probably not going to work, but that's irrelevant at the minute. Then you need to turn the manual focus assist to high. This is very important, it'll help you manually focus the lens. And lastly, in the focus modes, put it put it into manual. That's it. You're gonna be able to focus really easily with a manual lens. So I have three old slash vintage lenses. The first one is a 50mm f1.4 TV lens. This one, right here. It's a super tiny lens, but it's actually heavier than my kit lens on my Fujifilm, which is insane. This costs 25 euro. 25 euro with the adapter. That's right. It's ridiculous, and best of yet, this was new. What? If you want to learn more about this lens and its cool quirks and why you use it for, Comment down below and I'll be sure to make a video right away. Secondly, I have this. A 70-210 Nikon F4 to F5.6 lens. I've had this lens lying over after my Nikon broke and I just thought, why not? I'll just buy the adapter and use the lens with my Fujifilm. And to be honest, it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. Partly, I don't have it on me right now, but it's Helios 44-2, a 58mm F2 lens. And now to the main point of this video, why do I use old lenses on my Fujifilm camera? Just so you know, I use the term old very loosely and I just mean any lens that was not made by Fujifilm. If you did not know already, Fujifilm has one of the best ranges of lenses available. The glass is just sublime, but with such quality also comes price and their lenses cost around 1000 euro give or take. That is a huge sum of money by anyone's standards. For my lenses, you can find a Nikon for around 150 to 200 euro. This one I got it for 25, not to share about the price at the minute. And the Helios is between 60 and 80 euro right now. Great price, and it's not only my lenses that are this cheap. Older lenses, and especially old Nikon lenses, are widely available on eBay and local advertising sites such as Don, uh, Dundeal or Craigslist. But why? 
does the price matter so much? Well, if you're an aspiring photographer or videographer, you may not have a style or particular field that you specialize in. And this is where you want to kind of experiment and try different things out. So, by having a few different lenses, you can try out what do you like. Do you like portraits, landscapes, a bit of like product photography? Try everything out for a really small price. And then when you love something, you can actually put in the 1000 euro on a really nice Fujifilm lens and get unpaired images. That's what I'm doing myself. The Helios is one of the best portrait lenses. It's not sharp, it's not, you know, fast, and you have to manually focus it, but the swirly bokeh is wow. Next, old lenses have a character that new lenses just don't. There have been so many lenses made in the past with different quirks and traits. Most commonly have Nikon, f mounts, and g mounts. They're super common everywhere. And uh, lenses such as the 50mm pancake have become very recognisable. You can find these lenses with silk bubble bokeh. Really nice chromatic aberration. If you like the sound of all of these things, I recommend the channel Peoria Afophasis. His name is Kenny, he's a super nice bloke, and he has about 4,500 videos on photography. Most of these are to do with old lenses or just camera tips. Great channel, check that out. I'll have a link down below. Reason number three, vintage lenses often have an unparalleled quality to them. They are just made well with precision. If you had, a, if you ever picked up a new Canon lens, you probably felt it's plastic and it's really light in weight. This might appeal to some people, but I personally prefer quality. For example, even this cheap lens is made fully out of metal and really heavy glass. If you did not already know, the lower the element count, the better the picture that a lens produces. And talking about the quality of these lenses, I mean, well, I wouldn't dare to do this with 2000 euro Zeiss lens, but I don't really care to be honest. I can just chuck it in my bag, throw it up, throw it down, use it when there's snow on the side, and it doesn't bother me. Because if it gets broken, it's not a bad, it's not an expensive replacement, and to be frank, there is not a lot to break either. Last reason to buy a vintage lens. Vintage lenses make you a better photographer. Hang on with me for this one. By using old glass, you are forced to use manual aperture and manual focus. You have to spend more time getting your settings correct and getting your shot. This makes you think and focus more. You'll begin to get more creative, considering aspects such as lighting, composition and your subject in every single shot. You will improve. Wow Michael, that sounds fabulous! But with such benefits, there also is disadvantages. The main one is that you're probably going to use the lens in manual mode, unless you have a metal bones adapter and then this point does not really apply. And manual mode is often very precise, like when the f1.4 50mm is wide open, its focus range is the width of a paper clip. It's so thin. This is fine when you're in a studio or have a lot of time at home, but when you're on the run, this can be often very difficult to nail. Then, secondly, these lenses don't have image stabilization that works with the camera. For photography, this might not apply if you're using shutter sure speeds over 200 because the picture will be just frozen in time, but if you're ever trying to take a video, every little bump will be felt and you really need to use a tripod. This kind of limits you creatively. This disadvantage does not apply with every camera though. Cameras such as the Panasonic GH5 have in-body image stabilization, which means that they don't really need the lens to have image stabilization to have a smooth picture. This is the very last point of this whole video. Vintage or old lenses are simple and they don't have a lot of the modern innovations and things we take for advantage. These lenses will not have water seen with my Fujifilm camera, that's a given. These lenses are fairly big and bulky. These lenses are very heavy. These lenses can give vignetting. And these lenses don't have the coatings which prevent you from having lens flares and stuff like that. If these factors don't really bother you, and personally they don't bother me, I highly recommend any of these lenses and, and many of the ones that Theria Apophysis recommends as they will make your photography so much more fun and enjoyable. Thank you for watching. It's been a wild time.